Welcome to the presentation, Techniques for Better Writing. This presentation will focus specifically on the narrative project that you are working on for this class, but many of the same ideas apply to other styles of writing as well. Please follow along with this presentation by turning to Chapter 1 in How to Write Anything. Looking on page 16 of How to Write Anything, uh, we can see some discussion about style, um, specifically about the point of view that you can choose to write from. Um, most of us are pretty aware of these things. This is a pretty common thing for people to learn in literature uh, and language arts classes in high school, but just a quick review. First person is where the narrator tells a story from his or per, her point of view. I, you know, I am writing about the time my dog um, rescued me out of a big hole or something like that. I'm writing about it from my point of view as a person who was rescued from the well. Um, second person is where the narrator tells a story from a reader's point of view. This is um, often used either as an experimental device um, in a literary type of uh, style of writing. Um, sometimes it's used if you're trying to make a specific point or trying to work through things. Usually U is used only in like writing instructions, but again, uh, occasionally we can see it in more creative writing. And then third person is pretty common um, where a narrator is telling a story um, and the narrator is not a character himself or herself. So maybe using multiple points of view, pronouns like he, she, his, her, him, they and them. Um, I just read a story about, you know, the end of uh, the world as we know it, um, not the R.E.M. song, but about, you know, it, it's a book called Eleven, uh, Station Eleven, and it takes place in Michigan after a um, sickness, like a flu, has wiped out most of humanity. And the writer tells the story from lots of different characters' points of view, but they all are, he did this, she did that, um, and that is third-person point of view. Probably for your narrative, you will end up using first person, but you're welcome to try one of the others if you feel like that would be fitting. As you write your narrative, you'll want to think about what your voice is and what your tone is going to be. And um, those are things that uh, sometimes there's some overlap and they, they seem to be similar things. Um, but it's good to think about those things as you write. When you're, when you're talking about voice, you're thinking about um, what your personality or your persona, perhaps, or your character's personality is going to shine through. Um, and when we talk about persona, that means maybe you're writing this, but you're writing um, and you're sort of exaggerating or you're focusing on one particular part of your personality, or maybe you are sort of inventing a different you for this particular style of writing. For example, if you ever read anything that's like humor writing or things like that. Or even if you think about stand-up comedians. Stand-up comedians often tell stories about their lives um, or they, they talk about things that happen to them in their own lives. Sometimes they make these things up for comedy's sake. But again, they're focusing on a persona. So for example, um, I'm a big fan of Louis C.K. Or you think about somebody else like Amy Schumer. Um, or Chris Rock is another one of my favorites. They all focus on personas where they are sort of taking on a particular voice. And yeah, maybe there's part of them in that, but that's not all of them. It's not all of their personality. It's not all of their life. They're just bringing forth certain parts of it and sort of exaggerating parts of their personality, um, like their fussiness or they're drinking a lot and partying or um, they're common being the voice of reason and common sense. You're going to focus on those things and sort of let that be your personality and let that drive your writing. Um, and that helps you kind of focus on how you're going to tell the story as well. Maybe you're telling the story and you're taking on the voice of somebody who has struggled um, and finally learned something. Maybe you're taking on the voice of, man, I was the one person with common sense in this whole situation. Maybe you're taking on the voice of someone who had some empathy for someone else. Uh, maybe you're taking on a voice um, of someone who has a lot of regret about something, but you're going to use use the words um, that are going down onto your uh, paper um, to show that personality or show that certain aspect of your personality um, or your character. Um, tone has to do with the emotions and attitudes that drive your words there. So you have to kind of make some sense of this and choose what what is my tone going to be? Well, am I going to 
um, use again a lot of action we've talked about but am I going to write about this in sort of a sad way? Am I going to write about this in a humorous way? Am I going to write about this in a way where maybe I'm letting some of my anger out and, and I'm letting readers see how angry I am? Um, maybe I'm going to mix all of those things. A lot of um, times people who um, are writing about things and they're kind of angry about them, they use humor to mask that. Uh, maybe you're trying to get across a certain attitude. Maybe you're trying to come across as very thoughtful or contemplative or, well, I never really did solve this, but let's let's think about this. So you want to think about your tone. Um, think about this in your everyday life and writing narratives as well. If you are writing a complaint about something or you're writing up an incident report that happens, you don't want your tone to come across as too whiny or angry. You want to, You want your tone to come across as very controlled, um, but sometimes you have to be very insistent. So as you grow up just as a person, um, and some of us hearing this are, you know, 17 or 18, others of us listening to this, um, maybe in our 40s or 50s or somewhere in between, um, or even past that. And one of the part of the process of maturing as a person is learning how to control your tone and control how you behave and, and control the way that your words are coming out. So you want to Pay close attention, again, to the tone of what your writing is and how you want it to come across to readers so that they better uh, get your point out of it. Another great technique for uh, really making your writing a lot better is to work in some figures of speech. Now, we all do these anyway, but again, part of what we are going to focus on for this paper and for this entire semester is learning better control and choice over the words that we use. So think about these different ways of comparing things um, and that'll help you get your point across better to readers, uh, whether it's your overall point or just a specific uh, thing you want to say in one line. We can use similes, which is like or as, um, and you can see some examples here in the book. This is page 17. Um, he used his camera like a rifle. Uh, we also have metaphors where you're basically going to drop like or as, and that way the metaphor becomes a little bit uh, stronger, has a little bit more power. Um, the example they use there is his camera was a rifle aimed at enemies. So we took the like out and made it a little bit more direct, a little bit more powerful. And then an analogy basically extends the comparisons but with more description. And the example in the book it says his camera became a rifle aimed at his imaginary enemies, their private lives and his crosshairs. So they're taking a comparison and they're adding more elements to it. They're adding more to the comparison um, using some description to uh, sort of draw it out in the reader's mind. And some writers choose to actually have what's called an extended metaphor, um, where your entire story you would be using one thing as a metaphor for another. Um, so, for example, um, we see this, uh, sometimes people use religious metaphors or, or things like that. Um, if you think about Psalm 23, for those of you who may be familiar, even those who aren't religious are usually familiar with Psalm 23 from funerals. Um, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. And there's this whole extended metaphor about where this person uh, feels like his spiritual relationship with um, God or whatever the divine being that you might put in there um, is acting as a shepherd of uh, leading a person through the right ways and protecting a person the way that shepherds do. Um, and you can go through the whole thing and use that as an extended metaphor as a figure of speech. So the point that the uh, writer wants to get across about the relationship and feelings about um, God in this case have to do with um, shepherding and they use those to illustrate the way that uh, the writer feels. Um, we also get this a lot of times in love. Um, to go a completely dire different direction from Psalm 23, um, again, think about poison. Every rose has its thorn. Yeah, we're going to rock the 80s fake metal out today. Uh, every rose has its thorn. And talking about how love is like this rose where it's beautiful, but also there's a dangerous side to it. Again, this extended metaphor that goes all the way through that. And you can try that in your own writing. You do want to watch out for cliches, though. Um, and cliches, again, oftentimes start off as really insightful and really interesting and really fitting, but so many people use them that it's worn out by now. So when you talk about every rose has its thorn, talking about love is like a rose, well, there's a famous poem by Robert Burns, my love is like a red, red rose. And 
Then there is a song, another song, more of a pop song from the 80s. They say love is like a rose. Um, so again, you get this comparison of love to a rose so many times um, that now it doesn't really mean anything to a lot of people. So you want to watch out for those cliches as you're writing. When you're writing, your verbs matter. Now, that seems like a pretty simple statement and a pretty obvious one for somebody who teaches writing, but I want us to think about this. The verb is really at the center of the sentence. You, you can't get very far in any kind of writing without verbs. So we want to think about those and, and, again, choose which verbs we're going to use, not just let ideas flow out of us in whatever words they happen to pop out and then we don't do much about it. They are however they are. We want to go ahead and start choosing them a little bit more. So we want to choose action verbs over being verbs. And I'm going to take you way back to old school grammar class. What are being verbs? Well, is, was, are, were, these types of things that they don't really um, show us any action. Um, the way that a lot of teachers teach us is say, show me how to is, show me how to were or are. Well, you can't. It's just an existence thing. Um, or it's a linking type of a verb. So we want to choose good action verbs. And one of the advantages of action verbs, besides the fact that they actually do show action, they help describe to readers and uh, they help readers better see the characters and situations. So for example, if I am writing about myself and say, I walked through my house. Okay, well, you can see that happening probably, but um, you know, of course, once I describe my house, you can see it better. Um, but you'll still think, okay, well, how did he walk? You know, um, and, and you get into some more specific words you can use. You can say he shuffled. Well, why did he shuffle? Did he have a leg injury? He couldn't lift his legs up or was he just being lazy? Was he tired? Um, or I paced through my house. Well, pace, you know, makes you kind of think about somebody who's on a mission or maybe nervous. Um, when I'm on the phone, I tend to walk around and pace. It's a nervous habit. Um, maybe I sauntered. Well, it kind of lazily wandered over there, right? Mosey brings the same thing. Stride, again, makes it seem like there's a little bit more immediacy or some purpose to it. Um, you know, if I say, I waddled to the refrigerator, I'm probably trying to be humorous and, and give the idea that I already have a little bit of weight on me and I'm going to the refrigerator to add to it. Um, maybe I say I staggered through the house. I'm not going to talk about how it is I came about to be staggering. Maybe I was injured. Maybe I was partaking in things that made me stagger. I don't know. But these different words give you a little bit more imagery and help your readers better get a sense of the character and get a better sense of what's actually going on. So try to choose specific action verbs as a better writing technique. One really standard piece of writing advice is show, don't tell. And again, those of us who have taken creative writing classes, we've probably heard this a zillion times to the point where it does become kind of a cliche. But we want to think about this. Show our readers, don't just describe for words and words and words on end. You want to do a little bit of that here and there. But mostly we want to show our readers things through action and then add the descriptions along with the action or through dialogue. And dialogue is where you're quoting the different characters. Maybe um, you're coming up with these uh, words that a character would use. And maybe you remember the exact words used. Maybe you need to kind of um, fudge with that a little bit and you need to sort of uh, be a little bit creative and get to, again, the truth rather than the fact of the matter. But you want to work on those things as opposed to uh, lots of exposition, um, again, just explaining things and, and uh, giving a lot of description without any actual action. So remember, show, don't tell. Finally, let's talk a little bit about setting and context because uh, the where and when do make a big difference in your narrative writing. And like we just said, uh, you want to show, don't tell. Um, you don't want to give too much explanation and exposition without some action, but you do want to use some of these things. And one way to add description is to work on the setting or talk about what the context of something is. Well, how do we do that? We can look at page 20 in our How to Write Anything book for some good examples here. Um, but for example, uh, talk about where this happened. If this happened, uh, the story that you're telling um, for your project here happened at school, well, describe your school a little bit. Describe your classroom. Reach back into your brain, into the memories, and think about that. Or, you know, think about how maybe it looked. Uh, maybe you're going to describe your fourth grade classroom, even though the story took place in the third grade, but you don't remember that classroom. Again, those things can be okay. 
uh, work work on those a little bit. Um, but you want to think about some setting. Maybe uh, there's another setting that you would like to get into um, that that's going to give a little bit more insight into the characters themselves. Maybe you're writing about visiting a grandparent's house and the way that you describe your grandparents house tells us a lot more about the grandparents themselves. So rather than telling us, well my grandma was really into embroidery and my grandma was really into sewing, um, rather than just giving us that and saying that, maybe you tell your readers that they can um, learn about that by the fact that when you write about your grandma's house, you write about her embroidery and say, the house was decorated with this. And around the house, I saw lots of these dogs that my grandmother would sew because she was really into sewing dogs. Um, that's something that my grandmother was into. So you might want to write about those things. They help tell a little bit more about the place but, and give the reader some scenes, uh, scenes there but they also will tell more about your characters as well. You also want to use what's called concrete details, which again, very specific. So don't just say, it was a very cloudy day. Okay, you can, you can work on that. You can give some more details about how the clouds made everything look. Um, now again, this takes work. This is not something that for most people just spills out automatically. This is going to take really brainstorming, thinking about, and sometimes you might end up spending quite a while just working on one you know, section um, or a couple of lines that you really want to get right. That's okay. In fact, that's what we want here is you to work and do the best that you possibly can and make this the best piece of writing that you can rather than just something you happen to you know, plop down on a piece of paper and hand in. So. As we think about these different advanced techniques for writing, um, try to use some of them, if not all of them, as you move on. If this is the type of project where you've written other narratives, you've done this in school, then try to find some of these techniques that you can really focus on and really improve on for this particular project. Thanks again, everyone, for your attention throughout this presentation. I hope that you are doing well with your project and got started on that already. Um, if not, you need to make sure that you have gotten started on our project and make sure that you visit the other pieces um, within this unit um, that will help you as you get started and can succeed on this project. All right, whenever you're hearing this, I hope you have a great day.